Hello, everyone. Mahalo, much better. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm Merv Kitashima with Parents and Alumni Relations, and we're so excited to have you, and hopefully a bunch more will come, uh, to share with you what's going on in, in our counseling world, in college prep, and um, what I've never heard this before, so I'm learning as well as you. So we're going to start with Pule, as we always do, and then we're going to just go right into the program for the night. So if you would join me with, in Pule. Father in heaven, thank thee so much for this beautiful evening and the opportunity to come together to learn an important piece of uh, things we can use as parents to help our children as they prepare for college, especially in our junior and senior year here. We are grateful, especially grateful for our counselors who've come together to share their knowledge, to offer help, and to explain these things so that we again can help our children. We're grateful for Kamehameha. We're grateful for all that it offers us as parents, as families, as staff, and pray blessings upon our children especially in their junior and senior years, which are critical, that they will be able to do the best that they can. We pray for a safe journey for those on their way and for us at the end of this night. And again, acknowledge all that we have and offer it up to thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so I get the privilege of introducing uh, our junior. Come on in. Just come, come. No worries. Come on in. Of introducing the counseling staff that's here tonight. So first of all, we're going to introduce the junior counselors. We're going to introduce the junior counselors, and I hope you're familiar with them because you followed them from ninth grade, right? Yeah. So you should be familiar with them. We have Miss Kathy Shelby right here, who's with uh, students ending in, in letters A through KI. And then we have Miss Elisa Chung. Mrs. Alisa Chang, Kalamai, KL through Z. Uh, Mr. Larry Lee, who's an interim college counselor who's not here tonight. Mrs. Jennifer Baum, who is the college counselor along with Mr. Lee. And our outreach counselor, Mr. Ed Lapsley. Okay. Oh, learning support coordinator. She's not here. All right. Senior counselors, Mr. Michael Fuller, A through K. Ms. Alvina Lopez Chai, L through Z. Mr. Steve Morales, who's a college counselor who is not here this evening, and Mrs. Catherine K. Kaulike, college counselor, seniors. And our outreach counselor is Ms. Mina Casey Peng, right here. A great team of folks who are here to help your children be as successful as they can. So at this time, I'm going to turn some time over to uh, Ms. Alyssa Braffith, who is the dean of Student Support Services here. Aloha no kako. Good to see everybody. I want to thank um, all the counselors for their work in putting this presentation together and thank all of you for your interest in uh, what's going on with your sons and daughters. I wouldn't doubt that you would be here, so I'm just really happy that you're here. I want to just share a little bit background for you guys on what Navian, where did Naviance come from? Is it a hydrofoil? Is it a super ferry? What is it? It kind of is a super ferry, you know, a college and career super ferry for your sons and daughters. But back in 2008, when I first came on board, Randy Paris Tang, who is your vice principal, was the vice principal at Wailu High School at the time. And she gave me a call and she said, hey, you gotta look at this program. And she sent me a link and I, intern asked Bernie Silva, who's a retired counselor, if he'd do some exploration. And he did, and his feedback to me was this. He gave me the thumbs up, he gave me the nod, that we continue to explore by conducting tri-campus webinars, looking for gateways to get past KS security, and I don't mean Puna Gate or Main Gate. Okay, finally, as technology rapidly evolved, something called emerging tech came along. A little tech bird encouraged me to go that route. While I was confident that I could navigate the KS waters, I needed some help with the college waters. And at that end of it, I called on Catherine K. Kalike to come on board. And together, we went through numerous presentations after presentations. And after a year or so of persistence, it was finally approved as a project. Fast forward into last school year when we launched it. 
once we had the acquisition in place, the real deal began to unfold. The counselors were pretty much transported into 21st century college and career action in warp speed last year. However, in spite of the quick transition, everyone has done their part to learn how to navigate themselves and guide your sons and daughters through the process at each grade level. Through Naviance, we can learn about students' aspirations, their ambitions, their potential. Tonight, the counselors will give you an overview of how that's done. Additionally, parent access is a gateway for you to be able to hover and learn how you can stay apprised of the tasks your sons and daughters need to do along the journey of planning and preparing for their young adult life in college or post-secondary program, in the college or post-secondary program of their choice. So you probably got that email giving you access, telling you where to get the, uh, the link to go through the tutorial. Anybody got the email yet? Somebody did. If one person did, then you should check your email. So in that email, and that was sent out to all of the parents, the junior parents, in, in that email, you are going to be given a link that will take you to a tutorial. Once you go through the tutorial, on the bottom it says submit. It's submitting your request to have access. We're not instant access. So as soon as you submit, you're not going to get a confirmation like 10 seconds later. Give us at least 24 hours, one business day, to get back to you because what happens is the request goes to our administrative coordinators who goes through and opens it up for each person who's requested. So that's, um, that's how you can have that access to, to do that. So we're excited about the KS Ohana to Naviance Family Connections and at this time I'm gonna turn it over to the counselors. And again, thank everyone for all your hard work. Hi, my name is Elisa Chong. I'm a counselor for the class of 2016. And uh, uh, Auntie Merv mentioned earlier that I have students' last names starting with KL through Z. Um, I'm gonna first just sort of review. Um, Naviance is a tool, it's a resource. Um, it allows um, the students to have various college and career readiness solutions. Um, it helps with goal setting, career exploration, resume building, college exploration, and has college search and application uh, tools. Um, for our students who started last year, they were in 10th grade. And I'm just gonna sort of touch on some of the main features that we started with last year and then continued with this year. So if you have your laptop and wanna follow along, that's fine. And then um, we also have some slides that will help you visualize what I'm talking about. So this first slide shows you what you will see if you log in. This is the Family Connection homepage. So in guidance, we were um, going over with the students since last year that they connect to this through KS Connect. And once they log in, they'll see a homepage like this. Um, it has menu tabs across the top and then along the left as you can see. Um, the first area I'm gonna talk about is the resume tool. So they access this by clicking on the About Me tab, and that's the third one across the top. Once they click on the About Me tab, there will be sort of a middle rectangle section um, that says interesting things about me. And if you scroll down a bit, sort of in the bottom of that middle section, it says resume. So they started this last year, and it allowed them to record all sorts of information about themselves. So some of the things they could say was um, about their education, work experience, volunteer service, extracurricular activities, skills and academic achievement, awards and certificates, and so on. So there's many uh, important things that they can write and record in there. And if your son or daughter is like most of us, a year or two down the line, they're gonna forget. So one way that you can really help as a parent is if your student participates in a sort of you know, club, activity, wins an award, has a leadership role, anything like that, um, you can help nudge them and say, hey, you can add that to your Naviance resume. And then that'll help them keep it current. 
So that's something that we're encouraging them to do as well. And hopefully they're updating it, updating it maybe a couple times a year, maybe more, if their um, experiences change a lot. Okay. Another area that we covered um, since last year was a special feature called Prep Me. So the way to get to this is if you go back to the home page, for those of you who have your laptops, there is on the left side of the home page, there's some menu options and it's right, it's listed right along there on the left. So once you click on Prep Me, and that's what the screen shows on the left side. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so once you click on Prep Me, what it'll show you is um, the students will take short diagnostic test and then it helps give them a free customized PSAT or SAT prep kind of online class. So um, our students have completed their PSAT tests, so the next way that they could utilize this would be as SAT prep. So it's customized because they'll do the diagnostic test first for reading, writing, and math, and then they would enter in their test date, I believe, and that helps to sort of plot out what sort of skills they can work on. So that's another area where, as a parent, you can also help encourage them to utilize the prep me feature. Okay. So one other area that we covered since last year with the students is featured, if you go back to the home page, um, there are some menu tabs across the top, and if you click on career, they will have access to a lot of different career information. So three of the features that we've already been using with the students, one is called Road Trip Nation. And in this slide, it's sort of in the bottom side where it says Road Trip Nation. And this is a collection of over 3,500 short video clips. And the students sort of um, were able to view some of them in guidance and then on their own, they can access it anytime. And these video clips feature people from all different walks of life and a wide assortment of occupations. It just sort of allows them to be inspired and sort of see how different people ended up in the careers that they you know, eventually ended up in. So some of them had very straight paths and some of them had very winding paths. So it just serves as a way to just inspire and learn more. On Naviance, there are actually several different surveys and inventories. And Two of the ones we did related to um, career information, one was the career interest profiler, and another one was the cluster finder. So those were completed by the current juniors last year when they were sophomores and towards the end of the school year. It was a series of questions, and it sort of helped hone in their interests and then match it to various careers. And then when they click on those results, it gives a big variety of information such as you know, future wages, different college majors that connect to those career paths. So as a parent, you can ask your son or daughter what sort of um, results they had in their inventories, and hopefully they can show you the results, and then you can sort of explore together what sort of majors would relate to this career, and you might be surprised what sort of results that they had when they took it. Um, there's a series of questions that they answered in guidance, and so if they were at the guidance that day, and then we also followed up with, the, um, with an email, they would have been uh, already accessing that, uh, the list of information. Yeah. If you find that they haven't done it yet, they're welcome to do so. Okay, so for the next part of the presentation, um, my partner, Kathy Shelby, is gonna talk more about the college search features. Good evening, my name is Kathy Shelby and I have the students who are juniors who, whose last names begin with A through KI. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we began using Naviance as a college search feature. Um, and we started in sophomore guidance last year by kind of demonstrating some of the variety of features that are offered in Naviance that have to do with the college search process. First students learned about college rep visits um, and how to sign up for them. And I'll go over that in a second. And they were also instructed about creating a list in Naviance that's called Colleges I'm Thinking About. So there was one guidance we had first semester of junior year where we asked all of the students to add at least three colleges to the Colleges I'm Thinking About list. 
Um, they can add and delete and change it and tweak it and things like that as they go along, but we wanted them to start with at least three. And then lastly, they were introduced to some tools that would help them do college research. Okay, um, starting with college reps. Um, college reps are employees of colleges that come to our campus to meet with groups of students who are interested in that college. And we usually have over 200 both mainland, local, and some international colleges that come on campus to speak with our students. Usually the presentation is started with a short overview about the college, so they just kind of give basic information to the students, and then they open it up for a question and answer period for the students to ask questions that they're interested in. Um, in order to attend the college rep visit, however, students must sign up in advance. And so what we went over the first session in guidance, actually Mrs. Baum and um, the other college counselor at the time went over this with the junior class, was how to register for college rep visits. So when you go into KS Connect and you click on that feature, you get a list of the college reps that are going to be on campus and then the student needs to sign up at least 24 hours in advance to uh, meet with that rep. And they'll find out when the rep is coming, the date, the time, the location, the name of the college, and the name of the college rep. Okay. The majority of the college reps came first semester. That's when most college reps do their traveling. We do have a handful, I believe, coming second semester. So students, you can check out the list and see if anybody's coming that you're interested in. If you have a college that's, I'm thinking about list already, then you will automatically get an email that says that the college rep will be in town. If, if your college is on that, if the college rep that's coming is on your list of colleges I'm thinking about. So it gives you an alert to, to let um, you know that the, the rep will be in, on campus. Okay. Okay, as I mentioned, students may revise this list. There's, there's two on the bottom here, the two gray tabs will allow them to do revisions. They can add, they can delete as they go along. And their, their interests may change the more they find out about colleges. Once the list is created, this is what it looks like. Um, and another feature that's available in Naviance, once a student has created this college as I'm thinking about list, is the compare me feature. This is kind of an interesting feature that gives our students the opportunity to see how they compare to other Kamehameha graduates who have applied and been accepted to particular colleges. So it kind of lets the student know, how do I stack up compared to Kamehameha grads in the last maybe four or five years who have also been accepted to this college, okay? So if there's one or no students accepted to the college, they'll get this little note that says that there is insufficient data. But otherwise, they are given the data to compare themselves. So for instance, for UH Manoa, the average GPA of Kamehameha students over a few years who got in there was a 3.34, my eyes, <laughs> it's really tiny, 3.34. Okay, a word of caution that we also talked about with our students is to re read data with a critical eye. And please know that this is the average of Kamehameha graduates who have gotten into UH Manoa. This is not UH Manoa's admission requirement. Okay, UH Manoa's GPA requirement is actually 2.8. Okay, so um, just keep that in mind when you're looking at statistics. Okay, and then we have this feature that we've actually used with students a couple of times. We introduced them to it during sophomore year, and then we reintroduced it during junior year. And this is, I think, one of the best jump-off places for starting the college research process. It's called Supermatch, and what it does is it allows students to input the, the features they think they are interested in a college. So the orange tabs on the list are a variety of things that students can choose from. It's things like um, the location of the college, the majors that are offered, sports that this, the college offers, whether it has on-campus housing, 
what the campus setting is like, is there a religious affiliation that the student is interested in. The student clicks on all of those things, and as they click on what they're interested in, then they get a list of colleges that match their criteria. And we think this is a great place to start before they actually meet with the college counselors. It gives them something to, to work with when they're working with students. The list indicates how closely the student's criteria matches the college's. So it can be up to 100% as you're seeing here, or it can go down if there's less of a match. And um, it's a great way to prepare them for meeting with the college counselors and also for just beginning the research process. The junior counselors have gone over some of the features um, with the juniors and also sophomore year. And finding a college that's a good match for the students is actually our goal. It's, it's the philosophy of our college counseling program that we want to help to all of our students find a college that's a good match for them. Um, students are very individual in their wants and their desires, what they're looking for, and we think it's really important that they find something that is the right fit for them. So this is a good place to start. Now the senior counselors will be talking a little bit about the college application process and how seniors go about using Naviance. So we're going to start with Alvina Lopez-Chai. Okay, so now that you've mastered everything that a junior does, now the fun begins with senior year. And so I'm Alvina Lopez-Chai, as I've been introduced, and I have students that have the last name L through Z. And I can tell you that our seniors are in, and some I see here, they are in the midst of doing everything possible to get accepted to colleges, as well as now, trying to get money, filling out scholarships and so forth. So Naviance is a tool that can help with this process. And that's, I'm going to give first an overview, and then my partner, uh, Mr. Fuller, is going to kind of show you on Naviance where the different steps are. OK, so the first thing I want is I'm going to share with you our graduation requirements. So even though you're junior parents or in senior parents, you'll have an idea of what the students have to complete before they graduate from Kamehameha. And then also we're going over the college um, scholarship application process with the use of Naviance and then of course requesting a transcript and teacher recommendation. So let me go over the uh, graduation requirements first. The first, of course, is to apply to a college. Sometimes students will tell me, oh no, I'm going to work. I don't want to go to school anymore. I'm tired of it. Or no, I think I'm going to join the Army or the Navy, so I don't need to apply to a college. And that's not true. Kamehameha makes this a graduation requirement only because students change their minds. And if they change their minds in June and they didn't apply to any of the colleges, they have no door to open. And so as a graduation requirement and kind of our responsibility, we want to be sure they have at least one school in mind, whether it's a four-year or a community college, but at least they're going to be accepted someplace by the time they graduate from Kamehameha. Um, the second thing is they must take an ACT or an SAT-1. SAT-2 is usually only for special schools or schools that are on the higher end that um, require it. So usually what the student has to do is to check the school's requirements. Most, majority of the students will not take a subject test or SAT-2. Majority will take just the ACT or the SAT-1. Colleges accept either or both. And then they take the scores that are better in either or both. Okay, so a lot, even though they have to take one, again, the student that wants to go to work or the student that wants to um, join the military still should take it once because it's a graduation requirement, but because he or she can change their minds. And at least we know they have a set of scores to send. Okay, so um, usually they're going to do this through college board and ACT, and junior year is when we try to push them to at least take it once. So if you junior parents are in the audience, you should already be prepping them to take maybe the March or the May, 
so that at least they have one set of scores before entering senior year. For our seniors, it's too late because they should have taken it up to December, although I do have some students still taking this month um, in hopes to better their scores. But that's where you have to watch where the deadlines are for the applications. Otherwise, it's too late to send the scores. Um, a resume, as we talk, as the junior counselors mentioned about doing a resume. Senior year, what happened is Mr. Fuller and I, the seniors just began Naviance last year. So they didn't get to do all of the things that were shared with you in, that they're doing sophomore and junior year. They did very little and then boom, we're doing the applications. But the resume is something that they should update. What happened is our students began the resume last year and then that's it, they dropped it. And then they came and asked for a recommendation and all you got is an objective or education, nothing else on it and they've had to build it. So it's important that even though they're gonna do it this year as juniors, they should build it during the summer, any time they do something and they should build it um, during senior year before they ask for the recommendations. And then the last, of course, is a graduation uh, survey. This survey will tell us where the seniors decide they want to go and where should we send that final transcript to the college of their choice. And so this is a very important survey that will tell us where to do finalize everything for them. And they will do it at the end in May. But all these tasks are set up in Naviance. And so it's really important as juniors and as seniors to have this checklist because I can tell if you interview our seniors now, they're so overwhelmed because there's so many things they gotta remember besides passing their classes and making sure they got great grades to send as their seventh semester. So if you have a checklist, and Naviance is real good at having these tasks in there, and if you can go one by one checking, then they know that they'll be prepared senior year and not be so overwhelmed. Okay, so it's real important to use that task, and Mr. Fuller will show you that in, in just a little while. Um, just to review with you, just short, how, what is it to, what do you need to do to apply to a college? Of course, the first thing is, is application fee. This, it can go from zero, where you have a waiver. Some colleges give waivers as an encouragement for your sons and daughters to apply. Or you could get a waiver from college board based on financial need. Um, or you would have to pay, which can go up to $75. Now, I just want to put a footnote here. I have some students that are applying to 15 colleges. So uh, calculate 15 times 75. There goes your checkbook, right? Because now you're going to have to write for each college application fee. My suggestion is that you sit down with your sons and daughters, look at their colleges they're thinking about as juniors, and kind of talk story, you know, with them. What can you as a family afford and not afford? And, and kind of get it down to at least maybe about five colleges, which isn't as, as bad as 15. But um, it can get very expensive before you even continue the process because you have to pay this application fee. Okay, the, another thing, of course, is the actual application. And the application could be from the college, could be what's in Naviance, but we'll go over that in a second as a common app. Of course, take the SAT or ACT, those scores have to be sent, and it's the responsibility of the students to send it. Kamehameha does not send scores because the schools want it directly from the college board or from ACT. So it's real important that you have those scores ready to be sent. And of course, the last is the transcript. And the transcript, um, Mr. Fuller will show you how to this can, request for transcript can take place. It's through Naviance, and it's through, it's the grade level counselors that will be sending the transcripts once it's requested. Of course, we will need the students to tell us where to send it. If they request a transcript on Naviance, it just stays floating in cyberspace. No place to go. Until the students tell us, then we press that button and it goes directly 
to the schools. You know, so these are the four things that are real important when uh, completing an application. Now, I just wanted to give you that insight so that, you know, even though you're using this program, you have to keep in mind some of these things aren't part of the program, but they're real important for you to process that application. Okay? Okay, the, now, where do we get those applications from? Okay, at UH system, some schools have a system application. That means like in UH system, it's one application you fill out, and then you put where you want to send it to, UH Manoa, UH West Oahu, uh, community colleges, any of the community colleges, but it's only one that you have to fill out. Some schools are going to be individual. Others is going to be through Naviance. It has the Common App schools and the non-Common App schools. The Common App schools are those, there are many schools that decided to use this one application that you fill out and then you list the schools that you want to send it to and then you send it out. In the olden days, you had to do each one individually, as I remember. Now you can do this Common App and have it sent as the teacher can send their recommendation to those schools, as the counselor can send their recommendations to the schools. The non-Common App schools would be those that decide that they want you to do their application, or they could be public schools. You know, a lot of public schools just, you go on their website, you fill it out and submit it. Um, so these are others, and I think the third one is other, other schools, would be any others that technical schools or schools that are specific. Um, I have some students going to fashion design schools and so forth. Again, that's going to be directly on, online through those schools. Okay, so this is just giving you an idea of what is needed besides just using this system. And I'm going to have Mr. Fuller come up now, and he's actually going to show you what the seniors have been doing and where they've been going into to get um, those college applications going. All right, good evening. Sorry. Hi, I'm Mike Fuller. Grade 12 counselor for students with the last names beginning with A through K. Um, what I'm going to be taking you guys uh, through right now is actually the application process of what you guys have been listening to. Okay, so we're going to be moving from the colleges I'm thinking about to college I'm actually applying to. Okay, so we're going to go through that. Um, there's a couple of ways that you guys can start moving your colleges that you're thinking about to actual colleges you're going to apply to. The important thing to remember when you guys are moving your, your schools to the colleges I'm applying to list is that it cannot be deleted by students, okay? So you have to come in to see a counselor. So in other words, the expectation is that the students are serious about applying to those schools. Because that list that we use, um, that's basically how we're going to determine what documents or where we need to send things, okay? It's through this colleges I'm applying to list. So as you can see on the screen, we're in the colleges I'm applying to tab. Okay, so again, it's in the colleges tab. And then when you click on college, I'm, I'm thinking about. So juniors, um, you guys have experienced this already. Uh, for the senior parents or, and students, you guys, we've already moved past this. Um, but let me just go through it to explain how you guys can move it. So the first way is to go to your colleges I'm thinking about tab. And if you see on the bottom, on that page, there's a move schools or move to application list button, okay? That's the first way and probably the easiest way. So all you have to do is check the boxes next to the universities. And as you can see on the last slide, UH Manoa and University of Oregon was already checked off. So when you click on that move to application list, you're gonna be taken to this next screen just to confirm, okay, to make sure that these are the schools that you guys wanna apply to, okay? So when you click on add applications, okay, it's gonna move to the colleges I'm applying to list. And then on this screen, you see college I'm applying or thinking about, you notice that those two schools are gone. So they're removed from the list and they move on to college I'm applying to. So on the left-hand side, you've seen up on the panel, it's like a quick button, a quick tab. 
You guys can always use that to go back and forth through different sections of Naviance. If you click on colleges I'm applying to, which we have here, you notice that UH Manoa and University of Oregon should be on that list, okay? There's another way to add, okay, schools to this list, is if you click on College I'm Applying to tab, okay, there's several buttons right under the heading. It says Add to List. So if you click on that button, okay, again, that's one way, and there's gonna be a lookup bar where you can actually type in the school, okay, and then from there, again, you'll just add school to the list. And then, it, again, it'll pop up on this College I'm Applying to list. Okay. Some of the important features, okay, within this list is information or data um, that you guys can provide for us, okay. Um, Naviance is just as good as the information we provide, okay, so all the information that the students can, and can put in will help us, okay. So as you guys can see on the far end of this slide, there's a column that says My App. So that's where you guys can let us know, okay, that you guys applied, let us know that it was submitted. So if we do see a transcript request, and if you guys do tell us and come in and say, hey, um, I just requested a transcript for this school, we can see that you guys applied. And so that, that's a determination, or that helps us to figure out, okay, this student is ready for the documents to be sent. Okay, so again, this is just one place where you guys can edit and update information. Another thing I want to show you guys is on this list, if you guys click on the university, it'll take you directly to their website, okay? So that's another way you guys can apply. Um, as we mentioned before, some of you guys may be applying through Common App schools, and some of you guys may be applying straight through the schools or the websites. So just by clicking on the, the university, you guys can actually get uh, taken there to the website and actually apply. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out on the bottom is that there's a heading that says colleges that I'm attending. So in May, for our seniors, okay, coming this May, uh, there's gonna be a drop down menu, and that's where they're gonna determine what school they're gonna be attending. Okay, that information is good for us because that's part of our graduation survey, so we know where they're headed. Uh, so again, this is where you would find that information on this tab. So again, everything we're, we're talking about um, right now is in the colleges I'm applying to tab and this is basically for the seniors. Okay, so for the junior uh, students, parents, uh, this is what you guys will be expecting next year. For the senior parents, you guys can uh, kind of, again, talk to your, your, your child right now and ask them to kind of show you guys how to go about doing this, okay, so far. Because they should have been doing this already by now, um, and I'm sure they have. On this screen you see right here is if you click on the, the last screen, there was a, a pencil, okay? That's like a update or edit button. It'll take you to this screen, and here you can determine, you've uh, submitted an application, uh, you can determine what kind of application you're gonna be submitting. Is it regular decision, is it early decision, early action, okay? These are things you guys will be covering um, in guidance as well for the junior, junior parents and students. Uh, for senior students, okay, we've already covered this. The other important thing is the college deadline. Okay, if you guys can make sure you guys keep track of the deadlines. Okay, that's really important too as well. And this is where you guys can house that information and update it. Um, there's things like you guys can let us know too. What kind of interests, okay? You guys have a high interest, low interest. And again, format is whether or not you guys are applying online or paper form as well, okay? So again, that's all in the college I'm applying to list where you guys can update information. Okay, now for some of you students, you guys have already applied through the Common App for junior students. Uh, if you guys are thinking about applying through the Common App, this is one way Naviance and uh, Common App match up or they kind of talk. There's this process called where you have to match it up. Okay, so there's a couple of steps you need to do. Okay, if you do decide to apply through Common App, you have to one, make sure you create an account the next step is to make sure you complete the, the FERPA waiver. And then finally, in Naviance, okay, you're gonna use your email address that you use to create that Common App account. Now this is important because if you match it up correctly, okay, everything that you guys have in Common App will cross over into Naviance, okay? However, 
if you use a wrong email address, and say, for example, you created several accounts, okay, it might transfer the wrong information over. Okay, so make sure you guys use the correct email that you guys are using for Common App to match up your, your Naviance account as well. Okay, and this is important because if you guys are applying through Common App schools, we can only send documents once it's matched up. Okay, so we can't send your transcripts or school reports without it being matched. Okay, as you can see on this screen, once you guys have matched it up, it'll say uh, complete. Again, we're still in the college I'm applying to tab. So right below that heading, there's several buttons there um, that you guys can see. It says add to list, request transcripts, uh, view detailed status, and compare me. So what we're gonna be discussing right now is if you can see requesting transcripts. So this is another important part of the college application process is making sure that you guys request a transcript. Once you guys click on that button, it'll take you to another page that says all the schools that you guys have on your list and there'll be check boxes next to it. All you have to do is check it, okay? And then on the bottom of the page, it says add re or submit request or add request and then it'll just um, make a request that way. The other thing I want to point out is there's another way to add transcripts. Like say for example, you're like, okay, you're requesting transcripts, but you want to add a school as well as add a, as a, uh, add a transcript request as well. You're pretty serious about applying. So you can do it here as well on the bottom of the, the page. It says new applications. Um, you can actually do a lookup, like I was mentioning earlier, add the school in, and add a transcript request at the same time. Okay, so that's another way of um, adding or updating the data. Okay, so the next thing uh, we just wanted to talk about, and you guys already heard, is the resume. For our seniors, it's really important uh, because they will be asking counselors and teachers for recommendations, and many of us do ask students for their resume. Please update it as, as often as you guys can, because um, that will be useful information for us uh, when we do uh, write up your recommendations. If you guys need help or instructions on that, it's located in Naviance on the home page. Okay, it's located in a document library. It's to the right of that home page. You'll see it. Um, you can click on that and it'll show you all the different instructions that, that we have up in Naviance. It is also assigned as a task. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll explain or at least show you guys the next slide uh, where you guys can find these tasks. <clears throat> so right now, before I do that though, okay, <laughs> we're gonna... Um, it's been a last part of the, this whole college application process. So we've done the transcript requests, uh, we've matched up our schools, we added our schools to our list. Now we're gonna look to see, cause some schools ask for teacher recommendations. Okay, so right now this is the procedure we're using. So again, it's in the colleges I'm applying to list. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, okay, you'll see teacher recommendations and there'll be a drop down menu, it says add or cancel. Okay, when you click on that button, you'll see the screen here, okay? And it says add new requests. You click on that and you'll see a, a menu of teachers. Okay, you'll highlight it, okay? And then there's also a comment box. So what we've been telling our students is that make sure you guys have a face-to-face -face conversation with your teacher that you plan on assigning. Okay, so you wanna have a conversation with them. So to ask them in advance, you have to make sure that it's okay. Uh, they have agreed to write your teacher recommendation. Don't just put their name down and then expect an email to, to go to them, okay, because they may not be received very well. Okay, so make sure you guys have that, that conversation. Now in the comment box, we also suggest, yeah, that students thank them, you know, for agreeing to do it. You can also put in information like um, what schools you're applying to, okay, and also the deadlines. Okay, that's important too, okay, to make sure that your, your recommenders know when your deadlines, okay, are coming up. And that can all be put in that personal note. And then on the bottom, once you're done, you just update requests. And what happens is an email is sent to our teachers directly, okay? And after that, now once you send your, your request, you can also update or you can actually look at the progress, again, on college I'm applying to, okay? Under the teacher recommendation section, you'll be able to see where your, teacher, where your teachers are at in terms of the recommendation, okay? And finally, we talked about tasks that you guys will be assigned. It's just basically to keep you guys 
up to date, keep you guys on track. Every senior I talked to this year has said this year is overwhelming. I didn't expect it to be like this. They got schoolwork, like we mentioned before. They got applications. Sometimes the applications are lengthy. Um, right now, it's like a conveyor belt. Someone once told me, Ms. Baum here mentioned, and it was a good way of putting it. Senior is like, you know, Genki Sushi. The conveyor belt just keeps going around and around. You see the same things going around. That's kind of like how senior year is. Okay, everything just keeps going around and around. It's never ending. Okay, because right now, we just kind of finished the bulk of uh, college applications and we're getting right into it with scholarships as well. And, as, and students are still applying to college as, as well. So it's a lot of things happening at the same time on top of your coursework, on top of extracurricular activities, um, sports, clubs, things like that. So it does get overwhelming. So if you guys can just take some time to keep track of this My Planner, it's located on the home page, the Family Connection home page. And you'll see the tasks that are assigned to you. And it kind of give you an idea of what is expected of you folks for the, for the coming year. Um, again, just to keep you guys on track. And so it's just one way of just keeping you guys um, sane as well too, yeah? So make sure you guys can get through that year. Um, but yeah, so that's all I have about the application part of it um, and this how putting it to use. Now we have uh, Miss Jennifer Baum. She's gonna be doing some interactive fun Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Aloha, everyone. How are we doing? Thank you all for being here. It's a lot of information, yeah? Kind of exciting. Um, I am Jennifer Baum. I'm one of the college counselors with the junior class. So anybody who has Mrs. Chong um, for their grade level counselor, I'll be working with all of your students. So mahalo for coming. Quick show of hands. How many in here are senior parents? Just to kind of get a temperature check. Okay, how many so juniors? Juniors represent, all right. Okay, so you've gotten a lot of information. I, am, I see some of you with laptops open, kind of playing around as you go, which is great. Um, now we're gonna kind of shift things up a little bit and I see the laptops mostly in student hands. Let's shift it and let mom and dad take the wheel. Okay, so pass it over. Make sure that you have Naviance up for them though, yeah? At least give them a little bit help because most of them, this is their first time. Okay. All right, so we're gonna play a game and there are prizes. Okay, let's be clear about that. I have Mrs. Kekaulike who's gonna help me be my Vanna with the prize distribution. Okay, so this is how this is gonna work. Um, this is a scavenger hunt, but it's a scavenger hunt that we're gonna all work through together. So I'm gonna give you something to find, some information within Naviance. Um, and the first person to find it, raise your hand, okay? And then you are going to walk us through how you found it. So I'll be able to show everyone up here, especially for those families that maybe don't have a laptop handy. Um, okay. So the first person to find it and raise their hand, you're gonna have to tell everybody how you got there. That's how this is gonna work. You get, does that make sense? Yes? Yes or no? Okay, all right, so, um, and we're gonna highlight a couple of things that um, some of the counselors have already mentioned in their presentations because they are very important. Um, there's things that we do, um, like we said, require that the students do, yeah? Your children have to do some things in Naviance. They have to get their resume updated. Um, they have to do some college searching. That's a real critical part of our um, junior year especially. But there are some really cool things in Naviance that we don't actually make a requirement that we kind of wanted to highlight as well. Okay, you guys ready for the first question? Okay, parents, here we go. Okay, so for the first one, Naviance has a feature called the college map. So I want you to find the college map and figure out what is the eighth out of 20 most popular college that KSK students applied to. And then at that college, how many KSK students do we have attending there? And how many miles is it from our school? Students help mom and dad, they look lost. Oh, I see a hand, okay. Okay, wait, I'm gonna go live, yeah, into Naviant so we can all see together. Okay, mom in the back, I saw your hand first. I kind of feel like I'm at a piano, yeah, a little bit. 
like I should be singing or something, but I'm not going to. Let me log in. I got logged out. We talked too long. My session signed me out. Okay, so you guys should see this, yeah? Okay, mom in the back, can you please tell me how did you get there? What did you click on first? Colleges, and then what? College maps, okay. And then where did you go? This one, yeah, top 20. Top, top 20 most popular colleges. Okay, is everybody following along, yeah? Okay, and then where else? Eighth, yeah? So which one is that? UNLV, very good. And we can see... Awesome. So we have 95 Kamehameha students from Kapalama attending UNLV. And we, that school is 2,756 miles from home. Kind of cool, yeah? Good job, mom. Okay, so Vanna, Mrs. Kekolike, we'll be bringing you your prize. Okay, we have some fun college swag from the college counseling department. So we hope you enjoy. Okay, you guys kind of get the hang of how this goes. You ready for another one? Okay. Let me get this back up. Okay. So we did college map. Next up, Road Trip Nation. This is the one that Mrs. Chong talked about. How many videos, the exact number, are in the interview archive? And then once you get in there, whose name do you recognize under leaders beginning with the first name J? Leaders beginning with the first name J. First hand up gets to win the prize. Students can help. Help mom and dad if they lost. Help them, quick. So Road Trip Nation, oh, up front. Good job, mom. Okay, tell us how did you get there? Okay, careers, and then what? At the very bottom. Yep, three, 300, 3,552 videos, yep, very good. So we say explore more, and then what did you do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's, yep, the leaders, right? Uh-huh, by leader. And then we can find the J names, yeah? Yeah. So who did you find? Who did, but did you see anybody in particular that kind of like s stands out to you? Yeah, local boy, yeah? Right! Amazing, yeah, he's on this thing. This is a national thing, and they interviewed him for it. Very cool. Okay, thank you guys. Good job. So that's the Road Trip Nation. And so this really does give, you know, it's kind of like a happy, safe YouTube. Like there's, all the videos are happy and wonderful and they give great motivational messages. You know, we talk a lot about motivation with your students and even with ourselves. So this is a great place to go if, just to kind of get some inspiration. You know, especially as we're tackling this college search that seems so overwhelming, talking about careers, you know, that's a lot to deal with when you're 16, 17 years old. So this is a great place to go to kind of get some direction, hear from people and how their paths went. Good job, okay. We have a couple more, so there's still a chance to win. Okay, Road Trip Nation. Now we're gonna go to College Visit. This is another big one that Ms. Shelby talked about because this is a big part of learning about your schools. So the College Visits, where are they? And we wanna find what College Visit is happening in May 2015, and what is the deadline for us to sign up? Oh, good job. Fast, you guys getting good, yeah? I think so, you're getting really good. Okay, so tell me, where do we go? Austin University, awesome, good job. Okay, so tell me, how did you find that? Colleges. Colleges. <coughs> View all upcoming visits. 
the awesome university, okay? So this is not a real university, just have to throw that out there. I mean, I know you're all very intelligent people, but you know, just to make sure. Um, but this is how students would sign up for their visits. Some visits we cannot control when they happen. So if it happens to fall on your student's free period, not a problem, just gotta sign up in Naviance and come to the visit. If it happens to coincide with class, then they do need to get teacher permission, yeah? Um, so the sooner the better, which means it's important to check this regularly. Um, we do have the NACAT College Fair coming in April, which means we'll have a, another influx of colleges returning to Hawaii. Um, so that's another great time to try and get to some of these visits because they will visit our campus or at the very least attend the college fair. Because it makes a big difference um, to be able to actually speak with a representative from the college versus just reading about them on their website, yeah? Okay, good job, guys. Oh, you're getting so fast. Let's see how fast this one is. All right. Prep me. We also talked about prep me. So what are the two test prep courses offered through prep me? What are they called? And which diagnostic tests must be completed before beginning the actual lessons? So what are the two test prep courses that we offer through prep me? And which di Oh, you write in the light, that's why. I'm so sorry. Okay, so you found the answers. Okay. So we start on the home page, yeah? Prep me, perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so we do offer the PSAT and the SAT prep. Very good. Thank you so much, Dad. You did awesome. Um, this, the nice thing about prep me is that it does tailor the lessons specifically to your student. So depending, these tests have to be done first because they use the results of these tests, and they're very short. They're like 15, 16 questions, so it shouldn't take a terribly long time to finish the three. Um, it kind of uses that as a benchmark for what things the test pro prep program will focus on. So maybe we need to spend a little bit more time on math, or let's jump into these um, specific skill sets. There are some lessons that everybody gets, like let's talk about what a simile is. Um, that would be helpful for all students to know. Um, but when it comes to the actual skills that are tested, it tailors it more specifically to you. Yeah, so very helpful. Okay, very good. All right, I think this is the, oh no, two more, two more chances. Okay, so money, 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 right? College, we're always worried about how are we gonna pay for it? So we wanna find the scholarships information there is a scholarship on there that is worth $25,000 with a deadline in February. What is the name of that scholarship and is it renewable? Seniors, you should know how to find this one, yeah. Because I know Mr. Mo has been talking to you guys about scholarships. You got it? Yes? Yeah, okay, we have a, a mom down front, okay. So where did you go? Colleges, all the way at the bottom, scholarship list, very good. The Buick Achievers, because it's worth 25,000. And it's renewable, so that's, those are good information to kind of look for. This Naviance list of scholarships, good job, mom. Good job finding that. Um, this list is, by no means exhaustive, meaning there are tons of other resources out there for scholarships. This is what we know of at the district level. It's more of a place to kind of start as a place to look for possible scholarships that you might be eligible for, but there's always our local resources, Kele'i Pawahi Foundation, Hawaii Community Foundation. There's many, many, many opportunities, um, but Seniors are in the thick of things with applying for scholarships right now. Juniors, you cannot do any applications for scholarships now. Doesn't hurt to do some recon, yeah? To kind of see what I might be eligible for, maybe when the deadlines are, so you can kind of get an idea of what you're gonna be up against next year with all the essays and the applications and the recommendations, it's very wonderful. Um, so just to kind of get an idea of what's coming down the pipelines, yeah? Okay, very good. Here comes the last question. Last prize, you guys are doing awesome. Last one, super match. 
This one's huge for us juniors. So what are the first three criteria options that you can search by, yeah, when you open up Supermatch? And how do you go about actually adding a college that you find on Supermatch to your all-important colleges I'm thinking about list? Oh, in the back, very good, all right. Okay, so where did we go? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, very good. Okay, so you can um, search specifically for a school. That's definitely one way to do it. Um, you can also start entering in criteria. So give me, a, give me a place where you think your child might want to apply. Okay, so let's go California schools maybe. Let's try and get some, a search going. Okay, um, give me a possible major you think your child might be interested in majoring in. Architect? Engineering? So we can say all engineering majors. Um, we can put in, if we want it to be a four-year college, we can put in any of these different things, what kind of sports maybe your child plays. And as we add these different criteria, it's going to start generating a list. Yeah. So from here, all we have to do is say, add colleges I'm thinking about. Yeah, and it'll go right onto that list. So this really is, like Michelle B said, the place where we start when we're working with your students on generating the list because a lot of times we know the common ones, yeah, but there's so many schools out there that maybe we haven't even heard of that might be a good match, and it really is about finding that fit. So this is a great place to start the conversation and to really build that college list, okay? Good job, guys. Give yourselves a round of a hand. That was awesome. You did really good. You started finding them really fast. Um, thank you for playing along with me. Okay. Um, we do have Mrs. Kekalike who's going to come up real quick um, and just say a few closing words, and then we'll have some time for questions. Yeah? And I want to thank Ms. Baum for driving this evening. She pulled everybody together in the PowerPoint and clicked all evening. So thank you, Ms. Baum, for taking the lead on that. <coughs> So hopefully none of this is very surprising. It's a lot of information, it's a lot of information in one evening. But what I wanna reassure you with is that nothing is different for your student, just where and how it's happening. The graduation requirements aren't new. How they're being tracked is new, okay? Or some of the things like a resume. It's been a graduation requirement for years to turn in a resume. The benefit to students now for doing that with Naviance is when they complete it and save it, it's automatically checked off. The counselor can view it, the teacher can view it, and when they go to college and apply for a work-study job on their new campus, they can still log back into Naviance to access that same resume when they're applying for jobs in college. So the task of completing a resume for commitment to high school graduation is no different. But how it's happening and the usefulness to the student and people on this campus is very different. So it's not that everything is so new, but that the same requirements are there, but how we're doing them is new, and there's a lot of added features. Hopefully what you took away from the scavenger hunt that Jen led us in is that you maybe got lost along the way trying to get the answers to some of the questions. I kind of hope that you did, because I hope what you realize is you can't break it. You can't break Naviance at all, so please play with it. Um, what they mentioned in terms of some of the presentations is that we just rolled this out last year here at Kapalama and actually tried campus with our sister campuses as well. The seniors didn't have the full benefit of moving through this program over the four years and having a graduated rollout of all the modules and all of that, but we've left things open for these two classes that we won't eventually we'll eventually have just a little bit and kind of like give them more each year. Things are wide open now. So there are the things that are being walked through in guidance and the instruction that's happening there and making sure they know how to add colleges and that. But everything that we can has been left wide open for your students. So please play in there and have those conversations. This is all about your students' preparation for college, having as many options as they can and making informed decisions. We all are working together for the best of your students. And Naviance is really where we meet to have those conversations. 
There's much more data. I know when I first started, and I would tell students, oh, yeah, don't worry. You look, you know, you look like you're in range for this. Well, how do you know? Now I can visually show them because of our acceptance rate, or this is what's happened over the past five years or what have you. So it's where we meet. There's much more data to have those informed decisions and that information. Um, the other thing that we want to just mention is that some of the tasks that are happening are actually um, more useful. So when students do go on to sign up for those college rep visits, we're benefiting the teachers because we can shut it off 24 hours ahead and not get the students in trouble. But when they have a college in colleges I'm thinking about, they can get an email saying this college will be on campus. They sign up for that visit. Then they get a reminder to come to that visit. So it's all within the system. So having the student utilize the system is going to be really important. Also, some of the old-fashioned things I want to mention don't go away. So having a conversation with your student about the colleges on their list is still absolutely critical and vital to this process. One of the things we were kind of joking with another parent group was having the student go on and do a super match search and save it under, you know, the student's name. And then having the parent go on and do a search for what they think the student's criteria is or what they're hoping it may be, and then comparing those two lists and seeing if the students are on the same page with the parents. Um, those conversations are critical. Um, every year there seems to be one or two that, you know, the students applied and the parents paid the application fee and the student gets in and gets good financial aid. And then the parent says, oh, you're not going to Miami. That's way too far or whatever it may be. So those conversations, junior parents, we would love those to be happening at the beginning of the process, not the end of the process. So if you do, I know you're laughing, the student wasn't at the time. Um, if you do have criteria or parameters, regardless of what Naviance is saying, you're still the parents and the students in this process. And it's the student who's hopefully in the driver's seat, but it's the parent that's helping with this process and helping pay, and the student who actually ends up enrolling and sitting in that college seat. So you want to really make sure that those conversations are still happening. Navius can help guide those conversations and help you to make informed decisions. And as always, our counseling team is here to help with this process and with the students and parents. So if you have questions, I want to thank two members of Kitashima for pulling us together and requesting this um, programming for this evening. And she's going to kind of take on leading us through questions. Before we do any questions, we have about 20 minutes maybe, so 15. I just want to thank all of these wonderful counseling staff. <laughs> awesome. You know, I'm, I'm standing here and thinking, I've had seven children come through school, all of which have gone to college, not all of which have finished college. But if we had something like this, the, the amount of, of work that is saved on the parent end, the amount of information we never knew, you have at your fingertips. How awesome is that? So you, you got to make use of this. So questions? Anybody? While you're thinking, I, I need to, because we cannot see you, this video has been taken so we can post it for you, as well as the PowerPoint, if that's OK, we'll put it up. For you, for those who haven't been able to come, and most especially for our border parents, who've been calling our office since this came out, are you coming to my island? Are you coming to my island? And no, we're not taking eight people to every island. So this is the best that we can do for that. So I'm going to have to repeat your question, and one of our counseling staff will answer. So yes. So the question is, when we said put the email out, Contact email on the page. Contact email for colleges or SATs. Is it the student email or is it the parent email? It is the student email. Always the student email. Okay? Right. And you can read it, but you put in the student email. Thank you. Yes.
Okay, wait, that's too long. So here's what I'm going to do, Saul, and I hope it's okay. I'm going to let her have the mic stay there, but at least you can hear it. We're caught in here. <laughs> I think what you're asking is, with all the information in Navance, it sounds like maybe you have a student who's being recruited by a coach and already beginning those conversations. Can those coaches access the information in Navance? Is that your question? Information. RKS coaches or coaches at the college? So can college coaches access all the information in Naviance? Or can we share it? So kind of, you're gonna love these answers. Um, the resume, what's really, really cool about the resume is hopefully you, all the information's in there as you've kind of gone along. So if you have, you know, I won this most inspirational or we went ILH champs or whatever it was, every one of those is like a little mini paragraph. So you put in everything. I say this is not the time to shame. Put in everything you can think of that babysitting and volunteering and sports and academic awards and everything. And then when you say, you can save a resume under different titles. So you can do a senior resume. You can do a recruitment resume and just click on and pull and then reorder all of those athletic um, events or add in times or add in whatever it may be so you can use it to support it but coaches can't get into the system what you will want to do is add in all the colleges to colleges I'm thinking about so you get notification if they're on island or coming and then through Naviance you can get to all the colleges websites so it can support it but outside organizations don't can't get into it does that make sense okay um, the one exception to that is when it comes to be the application point of the process senior year, and Naviance and Common App do hold hands. Um, there's an intermediary where it goes kind of through a middleman, so transcripts are encrypted. But other than that, it's, it can support the process, but they can't get into it. Yeah, good question. Regarding the email address, which is a better email to use, a personal email address for the student or the KS email? There is a KS email that they will keep after they graduate. Um, what is most important is one that it's an appropriate email address. I saw a very interesting one the other day that I won't repeat in public. Um, and two, that it's one that is frequently checked. So if you check one more than another, you want to put in one that's being checked whether by student or by part. Yeah. Other questions? You can use Navi. So the question was, is Navi just for high school or can it transcend into the college experience? You can still access it once you graduate. So one of the instructions that seniors will be getting is um, right now they access Navians through KS Connect. Um, once they graduate, we just change how they access it because they don't have KS Connect access any longer, but they can still get directly in and that resume can be customized. So maybe, you know, I have an opportunity to do research at the college level. I'm gonna customize a resume for that. Or I wanna do a work study job in the Office of Admissions or be a tour guide. I'm gonna customize a resume for that so you can still access your information or if you're gonna transfer or apply for scholarship, do your um, request through the system as well. That's a good question. So, not, so the Auntie Merv's question was how long will the access be there? Um, Navient's standard answer is six years, but they haven't cut anyone off yet apparently, so. So, um, do you want to? Okay. So, so the comment slash question was about when they are in college, can they still request a transcript? Yes. Yeah, they can. They can use the system. Yeah.
in terms of admission requirements, okay, so the question was, does Canavians identify admissions requirements for colleges? So that's not a feature off the top that it sorts by, but you can get to that information from Navian. So I couldn't go in and say who takes Olelo Hawaii as, you know, meets their graduation requirement, all of them do, but I couldn't search for that specifically. Once you are in the system, you could use it to still get to that at the individual college level. Yes, yes. So the question was if, you know, if, for example, if I have a junior and the college is going to require three years of foreign language and we're coming up on registration for senior year, how can I get to that information? A um, couple of things. One, KS graduation requirements exceed almost everything um, nationwide. The more selective than the more academic, the better. So you can never go wrong with more math, more science, more language. Um, and the more selective, that's just almost an assumption. So. But as students do begin to build that list and do super match and do that search, that's something that they absolutely want to be checking, particularly for juniors if they still need to make any ch adjustments to their schedule. Yeah, good question. Other questions? Oh, that's a good question. So the question was, I understand that Naviance is how we're going to be applying to the colleges. Does it overlap with the financial processes? Is that correct? Okay. So um, no. <laughs> so you can get to FAFSA, and there's information in there to support the process. Like we have the links and the information, but that is a standalone federal system. Yeah, yeah. Which we will get you through next year. I promise. Yeah, but the A through G requirements, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that wasn't as much a question as a comment and encouragement for families that um, junior year may actually be too late to start to figure out some of those requirements. And actually, that's part of the reason that we were diligent in wanting to get Naviance is that those conversations need to happen earlier that you know, we would begin to meet with students junior year and they would say, oh, I want to go to X college. And we'd be like, well, you don't have your A through G requirements. Are you, you know, whatever it may be, like you don't have the 2.8 for Manoa, well, who nobody told me. I did. So we're, everything that's kind of bottlenecked at the junior and senior years, we are spreading back down to nine through 12. And there's actually talk of, um, I just came from a meeting last Friday where tri campus are looking at moving Naviance into middle school. So the comment was that the um, parent access came late for seniors. Yes, absolutely.
Oh, I'm sorry. So first of all, I apologize for that because this senior class got caught up in the whole launching and implementation. They didn't have the, the I guess the whole enchilada, so to speak, you know. And uh, from here on in, every class will have that access as we come in. What I can take away from you is to open that freshman access early. And I appreciate the, the comment, thank you. The college fairs? Yeah, we do encourage that, we do encourage that. And hey, if you're a freshman parent and you wanna go and just check it out, I would say go. You know, it, it never hurts to, to do that. So the comment here was with the college fairs that are held on every island, aren't they? For every major island, that it's not a senior event, not for seniors only, but from freshmen on up and even younger, we encourage parents and families to go. So that was the, the comment, I think. Okay, I think we, we're gonna wrap up because you have a little eval card, the blue. If you would please take a moment to fill that out and we'll compile, send it to you. But again, I'm just really excited about this. I'm hearing it for the first time just like you. And tomorrow night, if you want to hear what it's like for freshmen and sophomores, we'll be doing this again uh, in the auditorium right now. That's where we'll be. So if, if you miss something and you just feel like you want to come back, uh, junior and senior parents, you're welcome. But mahalo again. Big hand for our, our counseling staff. If you would leave, if there's any questions, you can write it on the back. We'll make sure our counseling staff gets it. Uh, let us know what you think. Just leave it on the table back here. Mahalo Nui, drive safely.